Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight, The Last Martian by Frederick Brown. It was like any evening, but duller than most. I was back in the city room. I'd just covered a boring banquet, and the food had been so bad that I felt cheated, even though it cost me nothing. Now, just for laughs, and my job... I was writing a long, glowing account of it. Billy Des Cargan. Yeah? You what? Mm hmm. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, Bonnie. Yeah. Uh, Bill. Yeah? You finished having that banquet story yet? Uh uh. Finish it, huh? Okay. You know Bonnie Welch, don't you? Bonnie's bar? Of course I know him. I know you know him. It's just a rhetorical question. What about him? He just phoned. So? You got a guy down there. Who? Claims to be from Mars. But is he drunk or raving or both? Bonnie doesn't know. But he said there might be a gag story if you want to come over and talk to the guy. Drinks on the expense account? Yeah. You got a deal. <laughs> There wasn't a trib reporter who didn't know Barney well enough to borrow money from him. I made for the bar like a St. Bernard makes for a fallen traveler and ordered a quick one with water on the side. Uh, keep the bottle handy, Barney. Which one is the Martian? Uh, you see the tall, uh, dismal-looking guy sitting alone there in the booth? Over there? That's him. What's his story? Well, he says he just got in from Mars two hours ago, and he's trying to figure it out. He claims he's the last living Martian. Mm-hmm. Does he know I'm a reporter? Sure. Uh, but he'd talk to anybody who listened to him. What's his name? He says it's uh, Yangon Dow. I'll talk to him. Now, uh, listen, Bill. Yeah. Uh, don't get him violent or anything. Huh? I, I don't want no trouble in my place. Oh, and don't worry, Barney. Look, dish up two beers for us, and I'll take him over with me. Barney drew two beers and cut off the head. He rang up 60 cents, gave me my change, and I went over to the Martian. Mr. Dow? Yes? You mind if I sit down? Help yourself. It's a free country. I brought your beer. Barney, the bartender, told me something about your problem. Oh? Thanks for the beer. Drink up. <sighs> well, I suppose you'd think I'm out of my mind, but... Well, maybe you'll be right. The bartender probably thinks I've flipped my lid. Listen, are you a doctor? Nope. Do you think I'm insane? I'm not a doctor, and I haven't even heard your story yet. How can I tell? Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything that happened, and you tell me if you think I'm all right. <sighs> Two hours ago, I was on Mars. Two hours? Uh, how did you get here? I don't know. That's the horrible thing. All I know is that the others were dead. All of them? How do you know? I saw them. I saw their bodies in the street. It was awful. Now, wait a minute. You mean you're the last one? 
The last Martian? Yes. Well, that's uh, a little hard to believe. Listen, I was there. I was in this room in the city of Scar. I don't know why I was there, but I was. I was locked in. Then I got hungry, and there was nobody to bring me food. So I worked the stone out of the floor and started digging. It took three days. When I got out and reached the street, everyone, everyone was dead, lying in the open. Well, what did you do? I took a Targan, an energy plane, and flew it to Xandar. Xandar is the biggest city, the capital. Every place, it was the same. Hundreds of thousands of bodies lying in the fields, the streets, as if, as if everyone had died at the exact same instant. At Xandar, in the stadium. I'm listening. In the stadium. There were a, a hundred thousand of them. As if, as if they'd come there specially to die together. I landed my ship there. In the stadium? Yes. I see. Well, there, in the stadium, they had built some sort of platform... On it was a column made of copper. Copper is a rare metal on Mars. And there was a push button. Where? In the copper column. Oh. And there was a Martian in a blue robe, a priest, right under the button. It was as though he pushed the button and died. And everybody else had died with him. Except you. Yes. All except me. And then? And then? I was on a Madison Avenue bus, riding to work, here in New York. Oh, now, wait a minute. Listen, I know you don't believe me. I know it sounds as if I was stark raving now, mad, but Take I... it easy, huh? You know what I think. What? You've had some sort of terrible shock. Oh, of course I had. There were three million of us, all dead. I don't mean that kind of shock. Of course, it was a dying world anyway. We didn't have more than two generations left. It was the krill. What was the krill? The disease. It reduced us to one-thirtieth of our population in two centuries. These, uh, three million, and they, they died of the krill? No. The krill killed slowly. These people died like that. With a push of a button. Well, why didn't they escape? We tried to develop space travel, but we couldn't. We couldn't even reach Demos or Phobos. Where are they? Our moons. Oh, I don't know too much about this thing. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Bell? Anything you like. Well, if the Martians didn't develop space travel, how do you think you got here in New York City? I, I don't know. It's driving me wild. I'm Yang and Dal, a Martian. And I'm here. In the body of an Earthman. The body of an Earthman? Of course. You don't think Martians look exactly like humans, do you? I'm three feet tall. Weigh what would be 20 pounds here on Earth. I have four arms and six fingers on each hand. <clears throat> uh, Barney. Yeah? Two more beers, huh, with whiskey chasers? Right. Uh, uh, go on, go on, Mr. Don. I don't mean to interrupt. It frightens me. Oh, I can understand that. You drink You want some help? Uh-uh. Thanks, Tony. I uh, drink up, Mr. Dow. Thank you. By the way, uh, who is this Earthman whose body you've got? Its name is Howard Wilcox. Howard Wilcox. Hmm? I'll just write that down. Uh, address? It's in the wallet. 45 Amber Court. Mm -hmm. uh, this Howard Wilcox whose body you're in, uh, does he have a family? It is married to a female of this species, yes. Well, have you been home? No. Then how do you know? I have all of its memories. I can do everything it could do. I know everything it knows. Oh, I see. I even have its tastes. Beer, for instance? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a job? At the Humber Lamp Company, 34th Street. Well, maybe you ought to call your wife. No, I... It frightens me. Why? I, this body, it loves its wife. Uh, let me buy this around. There's money in these pockets. Okay. It's 
very good of you to listen to my story. Uh, Barkeep, another round, please. Uh, tell me, Mr. Dow, did you ever suspect before that you were a Martian? Suspect? I am a Martian. Don't you understand? Well, how did you get in here? I told you, I was... I mean, this body was on its way to work. On a Madison Avenue bus, and then... I was inside it. It was thirsty, so it stopped for a drink. And I thought... Maybe the bartender could give me some advice. So I started talking. Don't you believe me? Listen, Howard, uh, you should be due home for dinner by now. Now, you're making your wife worry. Why not phone her? I'm afraid. What's there to worry about? Whether you're young and dull or Howard Wilcox, there's a woman sitting home worrying. I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right. You're very understanding. Oh, not at all. I... You wouldn't want to come with me, would you? Hmm? I mean, I'm... I'm sort of afraid. Well, it would look funny. I, I, I could tell her you're an old school friend. We could have dinner. And then maybe I could get to know her. You really want me to come? Would you? Let me make a phone call first, okay? Fine. I rang up the Tribune and got Cargan at the city desk. Hi, Bill Everett. Did you find him? Uh huh. Well, there's something strange about this guy. You think he's insane? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Is he or isn't he? Well, he's got the whole story so perfectly organized, he might even convince somebody it's true. He remembers every detail. What do you think he's going to do? Well, I'm going home with him. I'm going to meet his wife and observe them. How many drinks have you had? Oh, I'm sober. Don't worry. He was. Huh. Well, maybe you better come back here and I'll let Vincent handle this. Story. No, that isn't necessary. Just let me tag along a while. Okay. I will, don't worry. What's this guy's name? Yang and, uh, I mean Howard Wilcox. Address? 45 Amber Court. Okay. Oh, and Bill. Yes? Just remember one thing. What's that? You could be playing with dynamite. Watch your step. Number 45 Amber Court was an apartment down in the village. We were met at the door by a pretty woman in dungarees with a black hair and a ponytail with a red ribbon. Uh, let me handle it, okay? I wish you would. Howard, I was so worried. Uh, uh, th this is Bill Everett. I'm an old boyhood chum of your husband, Mrs. Wilcox. We met and I asked Howard to have a few drinks and, uh, I'm afraid it's all my fault. Bill is having dinner with us. If it isn't too much trouble. Well, I... No, no, of course not. Oh, that's very generous of you. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'd better start dinner. Uh, Howard? Yes? Are you all right? Why, yes. Fine. He didn't kiss me. Oh, I... well. <laughs> that's better. That's the first time in 11 years Howard hasn't kissed me when he came home. Well, we stopped and had a few drinks. It was all my fault, really. Look, just make yourself comfortable. I won't be long. Do you think she suspects? Of course not. I'll have to tell her. You want to wind up in an institution? No, but I can't keep up this pretense. Just set your mind to it. Now, after a while, it'll become natural. You'll forget that you ever were a Martian. You do believe me, then, about being a Martian? Of course. Oh, that's good to know. Now, look, whatever you do, don't tell your wife. It would ruin her life. I'll try not to tell her. Try very hard. Now, don't tell anybody. You and the bartender know, of course. We'll keep it quiet. Don't worry. Good. You think you can carry it off? I... I'll try. Good boy. Now, I'll tell you what. If you get into any kind of trouble, I mean, if you just have to talk to somebody about it, give me a call. Hmm? Uh, here, at this number. Now, if I'm not in, you leave a message with my boss. His name is Cargan. Cargan. You promise? I promise. Fine. You're very kind. This body... I, I mean, I... I've never met anybody so kind here on Earth. Forget it. Well, what have you two been discussing so secretly? Just business. Oh, I, I'm sorry about being late, dear. Well, you might have phoned. After all, you were only a few blocks from the house. Just as if you were on Mars or someplace. Dinner went pretty well. 
And Elaine Wilcox turned out to be an expert at shish kebab, which is one of my favorites. After dinner, I still had a couple of hours to put in at the paper, so I went back. Cargan came over to me right away. Well? Well? Is he or isn't he? He's a Martian, all right. No question about that. You're very funny. I have my moments. Would you mind telling me exactly where you've been for three hours and what you've been doing? I talked to Yang and Dao. That's his Martian name. Then we had dinner at his home. Very nice. Shish kebab. What about the story? Oh, yeah, the story. Well, it seems that he was locked in a room in the city of Scar. And he got out and saw all the dead bodies of the entire Martian population. Then he flew to the capital and saw a button that a priest had pressed, and the next thing he knew, he was inside an earth man named Howard Wilcox riding a Madison Avenue bus. Want me to write it up? Is that all you've got to tell me? That's all. Listen, this guy's going to be perfectly all right as soon as he gets used to the idea that he's Howard Wilcox. He is, yeah. I suppose you're a qualified psychiatrist? Well, I'm qualified to judge this. I'd better send Vincent over there. There's no need for that. I have a distinct feeling you've let your emotions get into the act. Well, what's wrong with emotions? They don't belong in this business. Look, Cargan, this is a decent enough guy. He's a little bewildered, maybe. Now, why not let him live out his life in peace? He may be dangerous. Don't you trust my judgment? We can't afford to pass up anything important. Oh, you're exaggerating. Maybe. Vincent. Yes, Mr. Cargan. I want you to do a follow-up on a story that Bill has started. A man named Howard Wilcox who thinks he's a Martian. Oh? Bill has the address. Now, if anything happens to this guy, they're liable to be questions and accusations. Vincent can handle that out of it. You want the full treatment on this story, Mr. Cargan? If you think the man is a menace, give him the full treatment. Okay, Mr. Cargan. I gave Vincent the address, feeling like a murderer, and then I beat it to the nearest phone booth and called Howard Wilcox's home. His wife, Elaine, answered. Yes? Oh, Mrs. Wilcox, this is Bill Everett again. Oh, did you forget something? No, uh, I have something to tell you, and it may sound a little weird, but bear with me. Oh, what is it? A man from my newspaper is coming over. His name is Vincent. Now, he's a big, ugly man with a scar on his lip. He's coming over here? He's on his way now. Well, what for? Well, that's the part you aren't going to believe, Mrs. Wilcox. Well, try me and see. He's going to murder your husband. I'm afraid I didn't hear you. I said he's coming over to murder your husband. You and Howard did do quite a bit of drinking. I'm trying to do you a favor. Now, listen to me. I'm listening. Send him away. Tell him Howard had to leave town. Do you hear me? Please, Mrs. Wilcox, if your husband means anything to you. Of course he does, but why not call the police? They'll laugh at you. I'm coming right over. I'll explain when I get there. And remember, your husband's life depends on this. I didn't know whether I'd convinced her or not. It all sounded so terribly melodramatic. Anyway, I hopped into a cab and told him to use a heavy foot on the gas pedal. And about 15 minutes later, I arrived at 45 Amber Court. It's you. Was Vincent here? There was a man here from the Tribune, yes. Did you do as I told you? Well, I... I got Howard out of the house. I sent him out with some mozzarella cheese and gave him a couple of places that don't carry it. What'd Vincent say? I told him Howard wouldn't be back in town till tomorrow. He said he'd be back. Did he say what he wanted? Just that he had some good news for my husband. Some good news? Uh, may I come in? I wish you would. I want to know what this is all about. Sit down. Mm-hmm. Now, would you mind explaining? You won't believe me. You keep saying that. Okay, Mrs. Wilcox. Your husband, Howard, is a Martian. A, a Martian? That's right. I see. And when did you discover this about my husband? This morning. Uh, would you mind telling me just when he arrived? Uh, from Mars, that is. This morning. You don't say. I told you you wouldn't believe me. Oh, I haven't said that yet. You're sure Howard is a Martian? Yep. He claims to be the last Martian. Look, see if I can make it clear. There was a plague sweeping Mars. Now, they devised a means of transporting their intellects through space to Earth. Their dead bodies remained behind. Now, Howard, your husband, was confined in an institution so he didn't get to go with the other Martian souls. 
He dug his way out and went to the capital city where the energy machine was located. Mm -hmm. I guess there was enough left to send his intelligence down here where it landed in the body of one Howard Wilcox. Uh, how did you find this out? He told me. Mr. Everett, if you don't mind, I'm rather tired. First you tell me someone's going to murder Howard, then you tell me he's the man from Mars. Now, I'd like to get some rest, if you don't mind. I'm trying to convince you your husband is in danger. If Howard is a Martian, just why did your Mr. Vincent want to kill him? Because Mr. Vincent is a Martian, too. Uh-huh. I suppose the editor of the Tribune is also a Martian? No, not the editor, just the editor of the City Desk. And you, Mr. Everett, are you a Martian, too? Matter of fact, yes. Yeah. Good night. Just won't see it, will you? Good night, Mr. Everett. Okay, I tried my best. Martians, indeed. Oh, Howard, thank heaven. Oh, I couldn't get the mozzarella. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Tell me, Howard, are you a Martian? What? Why, oh, yes. How did you know? Oh, a woman's intuition. It's terribly late, dear. Let's turn in. No, not yet. I want to know how you knew I was a Martian. Howard, please, I've had just about enough of this nonsense today. It isn't nonsense to me. Only this morning I was Yang Gandao, a Martian. Now I'm in the body of your husband. Is this a joke you and your friend Mr. Everett invented to torture me? Because if it is... It I... isn't a joke. It's the truth. Howard, I just can't stand much more of this. I'm beginning to wonder if it's, if it's me. Who could that be at this hour? I'll answer it. Yes? You are Mr. Howard Wilcox? Yes? My name is Vincent. I'm a reporter from the crib. Yes? May I come in? Yes. Who is... Oh, Mr. Vincent. I see your husband has unexpectedly returned from out of town, Mrs. Wilcox. Now, look here. Would you mind telling me why you lied to me? Yes, I would. Does it have anything to do with the fact that you know your husband's secret? What secret? That he is young and dull. A Martian. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Why is there such concern? I am young and dull. I am a Martian. The last Martian, as far as I know. That is where you're wrong, Mr. Wilcox. Wrong? You see, there are many of us. Many? Like me? Hundreds of thousands. We were teleported to Earth during the Great Migration and found ourselves, like you, inside human beings. But then I'm not alone. You do understand my position. Perfectly. I can establish contact... We can remember our old home. Unfortunately, no. I, I don't understand. Sadly enough, young and dull, you were considered mentally ill on Mars. Ill enough so that you were institutionalized. What? Here on Earth, a person like you represents a distinct threat to us. How do I threaten you? You're unstable. You may give us away. That would spoil it. Spoil what? Our plan. Plan? You, uh... You have not heard of the plan? I heard of no plan. I was in an institution. Yeah. You are certain now? Of course. What plan? If you knew, I would have been forced to destroy you... You just saved your own life, young and dull, and that of Howard Wilcox as well. What are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing at all. Aren't you afraid that I'll do something? Such as? Tell people my husband is a Martian. Really, Mrs. Wilcox, you know better. You'd be laughed at or sent to the nearest psychiatric clinic. No, we aren't at all concerned with the fact that people will betray our presence here on Earth. I'm sure you can appreciate the reaction if you were to phone the police and tell them that the crib reporters are all Martians. Well, not all. Just the city editor and yourself and Mr. Everett. How did you know that? Perhaps I'm one myself, Mr. Vincent. It isn't possible. Why not? 
Are you... Tell me where you were born. What city? I was born in Undanel near the Dead Canal of Kula. Your name? Zanat Cree. You are... You are party to the plan? The plan to take over the earth? Of course. Your husband, Yang and Dal. Why did you not inform him? For the same reason you did not. He is unstable. But there is no need to worry. I will care for him. Amazing. Now, would you mind leaving us alone? We have many things to discuss. Of course. It's amazing. Positively amazing. I was standing in Barney's bar having a double scotch on the rocks when Vincent came in looking like a man who spent the last three hours in a KitchenAid mixer with a dial-on fluffy. He came over and ordered without so much as a look at me. Uh, here it is, Mr. Vincent. Thanks. You okay? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, by the way, uh, did you fellas take care of that crackpot who was in here this afternoon, the one who thought he was a Martian? Hmm? Uh, uh sure, sure. Just a drunk, huh? Yeah, that's right. Wouldn't you say so, Bill? Oh, definitely. Well, let's see you, Barney. Sometimes you can't tell the Martians from the Earthmen. <laughs> you know? It's getting to be that way, Mr. Vincent. Right, Bill? That's right, Barney. Integration. That's what it is. I gave Barney a sly wink and lifted my glass along with Vincent. Of course, Barney understood. You see, he's one of the two. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Alan Cogan's story, Nothing But the Best, which tells about a strange mix-up in time and place. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Last Martian, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Frederick Brown and adapted for radio by George Leffert. Featured in the cast were Mandel Kramer, Elliot Reed, Santos Ortega, Ralph Bell, John McGovern, and Patricia Wheel. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-Minus One was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs>